Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. Uh, it's late on a Friday afternoon or perhaps an early Friday evening here in Tokyo. Uh, I don't have a lot of light left. I think the sun has already gone down so hopefully I have time to finish this video. I've got a lot of bats circling around here hunting for bugs. We don't have a lot of bugs here in Tokyo but we do seem to have a lot of bats. Maybe the number of bats has something to do with a very small number of bugs. So yeah, but, yeah they're around here hunting for and eating something. Uh, the weekend is finally upon us after a really long and busy week here, but uh, unfortunately everyone seems to, well, everyone has to stay at home this weekend, I guess. Uh, though there isn't really any official order for people to stay home or not, or to not go to work or to not open their stores, a lot of people are doing this anyway. And uh, as a result, I guess the results are pretty good. We don't have really a huge growth in the number of like coronavirus cases here in uh, Tokyo, and particularly uh, uh, in this area. Uh, we did have like cases going up to uh, 100, 200, 300, and now they're back down to under 100. So hopefully that means that uh, you know, things are doing pretty well here and all this uh, social distancing and uh, self-isolation and stuff we're practicing is having some effect. But as we'll be home on the weekend, hopefully that means I'll have time to make a couple more videos. And uh, speaking of videos, uh, I'm making one today about what many people think is the best 35mm film camera of all time. And that is, of course, the legendary Nikon F2. The Nikon F2 was introduced in 1971 and was brought out to replace the aging Nikon F. The Nikon F had been very popular uh, over the previous decade and uh, made Nikon uh, famous around the world for uh, uh, producing a really high quality SLR camera. So uh, Nikon took everything which was good about the Nikon F and made it into a new camera called the F2. Uh, in feel and balance, there's not a lot of difference between the Nikon F and the F2, but there are a bunch of very good improvements which were quite necessary to bring the F2 into, uh, I guess, uh, the 1970s. Uh, the most noticeable improvement was the addition of a film door in the back, which could simply be opened with uh, a latch rather than the very difficult and cumbersome removable film back which came on the Nikon F. Another uh, worthwhile addition was an extra stop of shutter speed. So now you had a 1 2,000th minimum shutter speed as opposed to the old 1 1,000th. And also uh, Nikon uh, created a new system of metered prisms for the F2, which were more accurate and more reliable than ones which were uh, made for the Nikon F. And in the later versions of, the, of these prisms, you could actually add uh, an automatic aperture system uh, to the Nikon F2, which would give you a shutter priority automatic operating system, which was quite cool and cutting edge at the time. Uh, overall, the features and functions and controls of the Nikon F2 are very similar. If you know how to shoot a Nikon F, uh, moving over to an F2 is, uh, as my daughter says, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Uh, on the top left here, we have the, the identical uh, film rewind knob, which came on the F and the earlier rangefinder cameras. Uh, we have pretty much the same flash mounting system where you add a Nikon uh, F2 uh, adapter and then add one of Nikon's multiple flashes to the camera. On the back here, we have the same button for releasing the uh, pentaprism. Uh, as I said, a number of prisms were uh, made available for these. I won't go into describing all of them because there were so many different ones, so I'll just kind of categorize them as earlier and later. Uh, the later prisms are easily identified because they have electrical contact on the side, which engage the automatic aperture system, which Nikon introduced later on. On the top here we have uh, an LED readout uh, with a couple of uh, uh, lights. Uh, what you want to do is you want to have both lights illuminated and that means that you have your shutter and aperture speed set to the most uh, accurate setting for an accurate exposure. And uh, if you look through the viewfinder the LEDs are also visible uh, inside. Moving on the other side here, we have another lever. Uh, when, uh, on the Nikon F2s, you have to engage two levers uh, to remove the prism. Uh, push this one in and push this one down, and then that allows you to lift off the pendant prism. Up here we have the dial, which sets the film speed. Uh, you have to adjust the uh, light meter with the uh, film speed ring here to match the film you have loaded inside the uh, camera. 
And uh, when you're using one of these prisms, you can turn this dial up here to adjust the shutter speed. And there's a, a secondary set of shutter speed numbers, which you can read here just above the uh, uh, film winding lever. When the prism is removed completely, then you can just look at the numbers from the top as you would on the, the Nikon F or uh, plain prism or eye level prism uh, model. Another change that we were rather obvious between, you know, to the Nikon F2 was that the shutter speed or shutter release uh, button was moved from the rear of the camera to the front of the camera, and uh, this caught me a little bit off guard. And sometimes when I'm, I'm switching back and forth between uh, uh, a later model Nikon camera and an earlier one, I find myself putting my finger in the wrong place. Uh, the winding lever and film counting uh, system is much simpler and uh, more reliable on the F2 as compared to the F, and it also makes the camera a little bit easier to take apart in service. Moving to the front of the camera, we have uh, a sync socket to add a flash uh, sync cable. Uh, we have the uh, uh, lens release button, which is pretty much in the same location on all Nikon SLR cameras, including the latest D5 model. On the other side here, we have a depth of field preview button, which allows you to see how much depth of field uh, when you look through the viewfinder, and also which allows you to uh, use uh, these metered prisms on lenses which do not engage uh, the metering system. Uh, if you're using some kind of odd aftermarket lens or uh, uh, a later autofocus like an AFD lens, which does not have a tab on the lens which engages the meter, you can use this button to stop down the lens and this will allow the meter to get an accurate light reading. And then behind that here we have a mirror lockup lever which can allow you to use the fisheye lenses or earlier Nikon wide angle lenses uh, which sit very back, you know, close back to the film. And then of course down here we have the self timer button. And on the bottom here, we have a, a few uh, differences compared to the earlier uh, Nikon F. Uh, the first is that, uh, you know, and what was a great improvement with the F2, was it made it much easier to use a motor drive. Now Nikon did, uh, of course, produce a motor drive for the Nikon F model, but it was kind of difficult and cumbersome to attach, and the battery pack was kind of odd, and then the external battery cap pack and cables and all that was a quite complicated mess. It was cutting edge in the 1950s, but by 1970 it was quite antiquated and really needed to be replaced. So Nikon uh, released a couple, some new motor drives for the F2. The first one was called the MD2, and then later it was replaced by the MD3. Uh, these were much more reliable, much more easier to use, and a lot easier to attach to the camera. On the bottom here we have this uh, the latch here, which uh, you turn to open the film door. And when you use a motor drive, this catch is designed to be removed and uh, it must be removed before you attach the motor drive and then when you want to open the film door there's a secondary catch on the back of the motor drive which allows you to do it. Here we have the battery cover and light meter in this camera will operate with a pair of uh, LR44 or SR44 uh, batteries. Uh, here we have a standard quarter inch uh, tripod socket. Uh, over here we have the release button, which you must depress in order to rewind the film. And then here we have a couple of uh, mechanical uh, couplings for the motor drive. We have uh, a drive attachment here and a release attachment, uh, which uh, engages the motor drive each time the, and allows, I guess, the, the timing of the shutter and the uh, motor drive to match. Uh, the earlier Nikon Fs uh, could use a motor drive, but inside the camera it required a special bottom plate underneath the film door. And these uh, bottom plates had a hole in them with a kind of a little like seesaw little mechanism on the inside. And this, uh, uh, when you fired the uh, shutter, it would push down the pin and that was how the uh, uh, I guess the shutter and the mirror and the a motor drive timed each other. Luckily you don't need any such nonsense on the F2. You, know, you just attach the motor drive and it's ready to go. Uh, as for lenses, uh, the Nikon F2 works with all of the manual focus uh, F-mount lenses. The early uh, F-mount, the AI and ASI lenses work without a hitch. And a large number of uh, lenses made by, say, uh, Tokina, Sigma, Vivitar, uh, and other companies can be used. And you can also use a large number of the uh, uh, autofocus lenses, uh, provided they have uh, uh, manual aperture control, like the AFD lenses. And as I said previously, uh, you cannot use um, uh, these lenses with the light meter unless you stop down the lens when metering through the original meter. 
Uh, I really love the Nikon F2 camera. There were quite a few variations. The most common ones are just the ordinary black and silver models. Uh, there was a data model which was introduced and that uh, featured a really huge and clumsy uh, back which allowed you to imprint the date on the film when you were shooting. And uh, these are rare and somewhat expensive and they have the special camera body and the motor, I guess, film back and all that went together. Uh, sometimes you find these separately when they're when the pieces are separate they tend to be less expensive sometimes i can find an f2 data body for maybe a thousand dollars or so uh, my favorite of the f2s is uh, the f2 titan or titanium model which was one of the the last variations produced uh, these uh, are virtually indestructible cameras uh, uh, and were very hard to beat up or dent. The titanium was quite thick on these cameras and very durable. And no matter how you drop one of these cameras, it was almost impossible to dent one. Uh, between the two cameras, the silver and the black paint models, um, the silver, the silver chrome-plated ones uh, have a more reliable finish. Uh, the problem I have with the Nikon F2 plane, F plane prism ones is the, the uh, the black paint cameras, the prisms are made with very thin brass and they're very easily dented. So just knocking them into another camera will put a pretty good dent in them and God forbid you drop it on the ground and it lands on the prism. Uh, the titanium ones are just about indestructible. Uh, the chrome plated ones, the brass is thicker uh, for some reason. I don't know why they made it thicker than on the black painted ones, but it's, uh, it's very hard to find a very nice and pristine looking black paint prism where it's not so hard to find a silver one. Uh, the titanium ones are really quite hard to find. I owned a Nikon F2 Titan for a number of years. I got from an old press photographer who worked up in Hokkaido where the weather is quite nasty, especially in the winter time, and he used that camera for years and years. And uh, he put it up for sale when he was trying to get funds to buy a new Nikon D3, and the price was really good, so uh, it's still a little high, but uh, I ended up buying it, and I really fell in love with that camera. And it was my main shooter for about two years. I carried it with me everywhere whenever I traveled. And then someone saw it and they fell in love with it. It was quite beat up and not much of the original paint left on it. And I ended up uh, selling it for somewhat of a profit. But now I really reg regret uh, selling that camera and I wish I, I still had it. So I'm kind of in the market for another Nikon uh, F2 tiny titanium so hopefully I'll be able to find one sometime in the near future which you know isn't too ludicrously priced. Anyway uh, that's it for my review of the Nikon uh, F2. If you have any questions feel free to ask in the comment section below. I am selling these in my uh, Etsy and eBay stores. If you're interested in buying a vintage Japanese camera uh, please check the description below the video for links to my stores. Uh, I am shipping right now uh, as much as I can. Uh, unfortunately, due to the virus outbreak, um, there are some countries I can no longer ship to. And the countries where I can ship, the shipping is quite uh, slow uh, as packages are kind of lined up at the airport waiting for planes to take them to their various places. Uh, I can easily ship to all English-speaking countries. So if you're in America, England, Australia, or Canada, uh, I, can, I can easily ship. And I think Hong Kong I can still get to. Uh, other places in Europe are hit and miss. It depends on where you happen to be. So if you if you want to buy a camera, uh, please ask me if I can uh, ship to your country. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And thanks again, and we'll see you again soon.